Blue is a demo of what I've been doing with uh, PowerShell to automate Blackmagic A10 Vision mixes, Casper CG, and other devices. See, so I'm running the integrated scripting environment for PowerShell, IEC, loaded up a script, and you see the first thing the script is doing is loading uh, some libraries, uh, one for the switcher lib, which is uh, a DLL I've been uh, working on to add more functionality from someone else's project uh, and also uh, Casper CG uh, .NET connector DLL uh, and you see once I've loaded the ATM library very simple to connect to the ATM and with great thing with PowerShell as I get in TallySense so I can find all the, the methods and properties that this uh, ATM object has for example, get the video mode, it tells me what video mode my switcher is set to, uh, and I'm adding more and more functionality to this um, as I need it. See here I can connect to Casper nice and, and simply. And once I've got that uh, ATEM device, it's also created an, an array of all the inputs that are available. So I can just highlight this and press the plate and it runs just that snippet. It shows me here all the inputs, what the label, the name and the port type is for my television studio. And then I've uh, got effectively the ability to um, load other PowerShell scripts. So this is called um, dot sourcing of the script. So the script gets executed, any functions that are in it are available, any code in it is run uh, in, this, in the same kind of global uh, space as the currently loaded script. So that provides me with the um, MIDI utilities. So here you can see I'm just switching up and down through my inputs by pressing a button on this MIDI controller you can see in the program window uh, so I can and also cut so just set up a button to to cut the inputs uh, the preview to the input and the other nice thing about PowerShell is that I can e explore uh, any of the the modules that I have loaded, so here we'll go down and find that MIDI module that I'm using. Uh, it's kind of like self-documentation, uh, but it's even more useful from, the, from that. So I haven't done this for the ATM, the switcher library yet, to make it, all these commands appear in here, but that'll be the, the next task. Uh, so if you're, you're writing a script, you can, can find out what all the, the properties uh, for a particular command. So here if we look at the send MIDI note, what I want to do is make the cut light go green for a few seconds when I push it. So on channel 0 in the note, and I found all my note numbers, uh, if you look in the program window, just written them down on a piece of paper. I had another PowerShell script that let me just push all the buttons and tell me what the note number was. Uh, so in this case, uh, I think 30, 23. Uh, now port is the identifier for this MIDI device uh, which is um, automatically found in the MIDI utilities script just by using the name of the device it returns the both the output and the input references for this device so it's uh, output port and the velocity I want to set 1 so you'll notice that the green light is on in the program window um, I've just hit run and it's inserted the line in the blue box so if I repeat that line just by doing an arrow up, my velocity 2, now the green light's flashing. Velocity 0 would turn it off. Um, so it's a very quick way of testing you know, the functionality even while I'm running um, the script that's automating the ATEM. I can try things out. I can copy this, the line that was executed to set the velocity. And if I go down here and look in my switch command, you'll see that 23 this is the function that will be run whenever you push the, the note 23, which happens to be the pause play button on my MIDI controller. You can see all the commands that I was currently running in there. Um, so I'm just going to break that into multiple lines and add the command to set the 
green light on. I'm just going to put semicolons in. I don't need to on multiple lines, but when I collapse it back down to a single line, I need them. So I'll leave them in there. Uh, and then we also want to be able to set the the button off, so that's velocity zero. And in between, setting it on and off, I want to sleep for three seconds. So we'll start a sleep for three seconds. Very simple scripting. And see all the IntelliSense um, debugging is great as well because you get really sensible errors, not just you know Lua script failed to compile. So I've saved that. We'll rerun PowerShell and. Uh, here we go, I'm on the wrong desktop, so I was RDP'd onto the, another laptop that was running this PowerShell, so it wasn't even the same laptop that was running the ATEM software. Uh, so, do the Windows command from inside my remote desktop session, run PowerShell ISE, load the script, and run it. Now what you can see, I've left the green light blinking, but if I push cut, the light has now stopped blinking. It's in the preview window and the light's gone out. If I push it, you can see in the program window it's green and after three seconds it turns off. So nice and simple. Now another treat, I've programmed up another button that's going to load Casper CG into preview, fade that into the program view, the video plays, and then after a set amount of time it's going to uh, fade back to the preview input. So yeah, that all happened um, from the push of one button. Uh, so a huge amount of power, uh, I think, in PowerShell.